Success is one of the possible outcomes, uh, which I always think is uh, when embarking on a, an endeavor, success should be at least one of the possible outcomes. Elon Musk is known for his technological leaps. In a couple of years, Musk's fantasy of holding a greenhouse experiment on Mars switched to holding a vast number of rocket launches by setting up SpaceX, a private aerospace company. Have you heard of it? The initial years of the company were grim, with it being on the verge of fizzling out, as per Musk. Yet the platform went on to make history by launching their Falcon 1 rocket, succeeding in their fourth attempt with their fourth rocket after undergoing three foiled attempts at getting to orbit. And now, SpaceX has skyrocketed to the top of the space world. Under the ingenious guidance of Musk, the space company has really reached new heights. However, despite all their successes and achievements, Musk and his team continue to struggle with some big problems that have really hampered their progress. And in today's episode, we're going to discuss its newest engine, Raptor 2. SpaceX has built unexpectedly powerful engines, but this has also been the source of many problems. Allow me to explain. First and foremost, it should be emphasized that Raptor 2 engines produce an immense amount of energy. Raptor 2, uh, a standard operating pressure is 300 bar, which is kind of, this is crazy for a rocket engine. But the huge energy source is a potential detriment to itself even on the ground. No one's Finally, ever done 300 bar. No, especially not sustained. I'm sure they did it on... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe blew one up and trying to get there or something. Oh, we, but, blew, we blew a, a lot of engines up. Yeah. Uh, I've lost count of how many, I think we might have blown up 30 engines, or so. that's a lot. And this is not actually that hard to understand. In fact, once the propellant inside the engine has combusted, it turns into a gas and creates an enormous amount of pressure inside the chamber. But one of the most important parts of the engine is the nozzle. This is the final stage of the engine and its job is to take all of that pressure and direct it out the back to maximize the thrust. In order to use that pressure most efficiently, the nozzle is designed so that the pressure of the gas matches the surrounding air pressure as it leaves the nozzle. If the pressure is higher than the ambient pressure at this point, it will spill over the edges, reducing the thrust. This doesn't cause any harm to the engine, but it does reduce its efficiency. But as rockets climb through the atmosphere, the air pressure drops. This means that no matter how the nozzle is shaped, the engine will lose efficiency as it gets higher. However, since Starship's second stage doesn't get used until it's already out of the thickest parts of the atmosphere, its main engines can be designed specifically for the vacuum of space. In order to work efficiently, in space, the Raptor vacuum engine has a much larger engine nozzle. This is due to the fact that in space, the exhaust plume expands much more since there is no atmosphere pushing against it. But the problem comes when it's time to test this kind of engine down on the ground. Although it's fine for the exit pressure to be greater than the ambient pressure, if the exit pressure is much lower, the effects could be catastrophic. And when this happens, the air starts to push its way into the engine bell, separating the exhaust flow from the walls of the nozzle. If the pressure difference is too much, the engine nozzle could vibrate so intensely that it rips itself apart. This was a problem they had to avoid when designing the space shuttle since its engines had to operate from the ground all the way into space. And what's more serious, the Raptor's power even threatened the very existence of the launch pad as it took off. To put it simply, SpaceX is clearly facing unprecedented problems because it is doing unusual things. And that's why the Starship mission is still in testing mode, and it needs to be careful in its testing. SpaceX has worked around the clock to conduct tests, mainly focusing on firing up the Raptor engines on Starship and Super Heavy booster prototypes for months. Known as Booster 7 and Ship 24, SpaceX has been slowly testing both prototypes for approximately four months, beginning back in April and May, respectively. It was only in early August did the company cautiously begin attempting to ignite their Raptor engines as part of a process known as static fire testing. By far, the most difficult and important part of qualifying both vehicles for flight. But thanks to progress made in 2021, SpaceX already had significant experience testing an earlier orbital class Starship prototype on the ground. But the process of testing Ship 24 is still fresh and unfamiliar for a number of reasons. For Booster 7, the challenges are even greater. On top of major design changes made to Starship and Super Heavy over the last year as SpaceX continues to refine the rocket, the company also developed a 
substantially different version of its Raptor engine. Compared to Raptor version 1, Raptor V2 almost looks like an entirely new engine and can produce around 25% more thrust, which is 230 tons versus the original 185 tons of the version 1. SpaceX has also tweaked how the engine operates, particularly around startup and shutdown, further weakening the value of past experience testing Raptor 1 and 1.5 engines on Ship 20 and Boosters 3 and 4. In other words, with Ship 24 and Booster 7 engine testing, it's possible that SpaceX is effectively starting from scratch. Many aspects of testing, propellant conditioning, thermal characteristics, tanking, detanking, certain test stands, are likely mostly unchanged, but almost every aspect of a rocket is affected by its engines. Before SpaceX began testing Raptor version 2 engines on a Starship and Booster prototype, it wasn't clear if the changes between 1.5 and 2 would invalidate a lot of prior testing. After the start of Booster 7 and Ship 24 static fire testing, it's now clear that a lot of that earlier work has to be redone. It's also clear that despite some of the simplifications in Raptor 2's design, operating the engine on Starship and Super Heavy is much harder to get right. But since mid-July, SpaceX has completed around 15 to 20 spin prime tests between Ship 24 and Booster 7. More of that kind of test than any other prototype in the history of Starbase has performed. Then, SpaceX kicked off the engine testing campaign on both vehicles in August. Before either vehicle can be considered ready for flight, each will likely need to conduct multiple successful static fires with all of their Raptor engines. Six RVAC engines on S-24 and 33 C-level Raptors on B-7. Ship 24's path to flight readiness should be simpler, as it has lit up all six of its Raptors back in September. Meanwhile, B-7, four months after the start of engine testing, conducted several static fires, but never has attempted to ignite half of its engines. Regardless, one day, the B-7 will still have to do a full 33-engine static fire attempt, which is perhaps the single most important test standing between SpaceX and Starship's first orbital launch attempt. And the SpaceX team will be treading carefully with this test, as they would need to avoid any accidents or RUDs that would set them back for half a year on the mission. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.